Good morning. I'm in California today, I'm in Berkeley, and I'm here to see Bellwether, a new kind of roasting machine startup, and I'm here to see them as a kind of advisor to them to kind of offer some thoughts and ideas and see what they're doing and where the technology is and and what the future might look like. Now, if you're not familiar with Bellwether, Bellwether make a, a kind of new kind of coffee roaster. It's a machine designed to be uh, smoke free, right? It, it doesn't need connecting to ventilation or anything like that. It doesn't produce any smoke. Uh, its primary goal actually in its early build was that you could just put it in any cafe and not have to worry about venting it out, which is kind of an amazing thing. And it does some pretty clever stuff to get rid of emissions. Um, there's a tiny little bit of smell from this thing, but, but really there's no smoke, there's no hassles, right? So that's, that's the first kind of interesting thing about this roaster. This is in its really early stages, right? So a bunch of stuff that happened today I couldn't really film. I really understand that there's lots they don't really want to have out there in the world quite yet. But I was able to capture a few different things about the machine. So size-wise, it is, you know, compared to me, it's about the size of a decent, perhaps American fridge, right? Like, not, not like a small refrigerator, but like a good sized one. So power-wise, it does need a decent amount of power because it's going to roast up to about three kilos of coffee per batch. I think seven pounds is, is how they would think about it and describe it. And, and uh, they would say it is a true seven pound roaster, right? A, a lot of the times, coffee roasters will say that they're a 15 kilo roaster, but really you're probably going to load 10 to 12 kilos into it. There's often a bit of a gap. So for them, it's, they say it's a, it's a true seven pound roaster, which for an electric roaster is actually a decent amount of coffee. You might wonder why I'm here, right? You know, this kind of a business that will sell roasters and then also sell uh, potentially some green coffee to its customers. Uh, you're not locked in. You don't have to buy green coffee from Bellwether, but they have, you know, coffee available and they've got a great sourcing team. They are, to me, a, a kind of disruptive competitor potentially. But I'll tell you why I'm interested in this. And, and I think about the future, maybe quite a long way in the future, but right now coffee roasting is extremely reliant on burning gas. And I would hope at some point we manage to transition away from burning gas as, as a source of heat. Right? I would hope that in the future we don't have to keep doing that because we know that's a bad thing. So we're probably using electricity as our heat source. And if that's the case, well, we know right now that doesn't scale super well. Right? So you're not going to have this classic model of all the coffee being roasted in one place and distributed out. So it's likely that in the future, there's a potential outcome where coffee roasting happens like this in a very distributed way uh, because it's all run through electricity and that's coming from sustainable sources and that's me being hopeful. So from a, from a future perspective, I think this is just something to pay attention to or, or these kind of roasters and projects, which is why it was interesting to me. So you're probably going to ask the obvious question, which is, is it good? Does it roast amazing coffee? And at this stage, I can't really tell you. One, I've only cupped a handful of coffees roasted on it. And two, this is a really early stage thing. It's full of potential. And certainly we've seen roasters arrive that work in a different way. And I think of the Loring, right? When that first appeared on the scene, it had a lot of detractors. People felt it couldn't roast coffee that was as good as the classic drum roasters. But I think that thinking has changed as we've begun to understand that new tool. And I think there's tons of potential in how this thing works. And in some ways it's a little bit similar, right? Like it has in it um, a scrubber unit that uses heat to, to, to burn off uh, the smoke in particular and other stuff that you don't want and and that air is that clean hot air is recirculated back through the roaster which is one way it gets rid of um, smell and, and, and emissions and a little bit of cold air is introduced and a little bit of the existing air is taken out run through a HEPA filter um, and a HEPA filter is also used to filter out uh, the cooling air when you drop a roast into the cooling tray you know it's kind of an air roaster with a fixed drum that, that has a sort of spinning, churning mechanism inside it. So the drum doesn't rotate, the drum is fixed, uh, and then it churns inside. There's tons of data from this roaster. There's, there's lots of probes all over this thing, and, and they're really starting to dig into 
the data coming out of it and what it means or what it could mean. And I think there's some really interesting potential in a roaster like this to, to, to approach roasting in a slightly different way. Right? I, I get quite excited about those kind of potentials. It's, it's a really interesting technology that I think opens up some really new possibilities that maybe will take us to a place where coffee roasting gets a little less frustrating. Right? I, I, I have long been frustrated by the way that coffee roasters work, by the way we use temperature probes in the bean mass. A, a lot of that just, just doesn't work that well. So I think there is a better way. So coming out here to Berkeley was kind of cool. Like I could see the early models that they built. There's I think four or five uh, units built right now that they're experimenting on and iterating with. Uh, you know, they're starting to work with some early customers uh, and it's definitely an exciting time. And this, they're a very open-minded, very responsive uh, company to work with. Like I'm super interested by, by the potential, by what this could mean for the future and thinking a long way down the line is this how coffee roasting will happen in the future once we've moved away from fossil fuels? That's a really good question. So lots more to explore. I, I look forward to coming back here again and digging in deeper as they, as they progress down their journey to, to having something officially out there in the world and, and available. But um, today has been like a really exciting, really productive, really interesting day. Uh, and I have enjoyed it a lot. So if you have any questions, I will answer what I can down in the comments below. Please ask me. Um, some stuff I just can't answer. It's not my place to share that information, but if I can, I will. And uh, as always, thank you so much for watching and uh, I hope you have a great day.